You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. My name is Lisa Webster. I'm a Gabriola resident and a volunteer with the Life on Gabriola Media Society. And today we're here to interview John White with the Sinemic First Nation Marine Division. Um, he's the director of that and has been an integral part of the planning for World's Ocean Day. Uh, this event is a um, collaboration between Sinemic First Nation, uh, DFO, and the Gabriola Arts Council. And so we really wanted to interview John to give everyone an idea of what, um, what the Marine Division does and how can Gabriolans um, learn more and how maybe we can interact with your division in a good way. So John, I'm gonna turn it over to you and I'll have you uh, introduce yourself in the way that you would like. Awesome, thank you very much. I'd squell everyone. At the pay, Sethia Tanitsanach Nanemo. So my given name is John White. I am the Marine Division Director for Snaimo First Nation. So maybe to give you just a little bit of background on our Marine Division, it's a newly developed division. Uh, it's probably two years old. Uh, prior to that, we had a fisheries uh, office where we dealt primarily with, uh, with just fisheries and, and salmon and some in-river activity. So now Snanemo has branched out uh, into a marine division. So what that entails is we've got four different sectors within the marine division. So we've got our marine environment, uh, we've got our in-river uh, in crew, uh, we've got our emergency response section, and we've got our enforcement, enforcement uh, side of things. So just to give you a bit of a breakdown, our marine uh, team, uh, what, what entails their work, uh, they work out in the Salish Sea. So we do a lot of uh, water quality and baseline data collection. So we do a lot of ROV mapping, some drone surveys, eelgrass beds. Uh, we work with a lot of different groups. We work with DFO, Pacific Salmon Foundation, the Nature's Trust of British Columbia. We try and bring in as many partners as we can to share our expertise and share the information that we're collecting. So our next um, sector within the Marine Division is our in-river and our freshwater crew. So what that entails is we do a lot of work with uh, uh, BCCF, the British Columbia Conservation Federation. So we do a lot of work around juvenile salmonids, uh, a lot of pit tagging work, fish identification, and just kind of enhancing that river system for, uh, for salmonids. And then uh, also on the, on the freshwater side, we do a lot of work with the Nanaimo River hatchery. So we work with uh, collecting brood. We do a lot of brood stocking and we do a lot of uh, support work with the hatchery to enhance our, our salmonids and um, kind of the health of our adult salmon. We do a lot of monitoring around the health of our adult salmon with them. That entails a lot of swim surveys and, and keeping an eye on them with the rising temperature and climate change. We do a lot of work around temperatures and and ocean acidification and uh, uh, with the in river we really watch the holding pools for the adult salmon and keep an eye on the temperatures uh, throughout throughout the summer and uh, the drought months so our next section is our emergency response so we've got <clears throat> several different vessels we've got a 28 foot landing craft that's fully equipped to respond to any environmental vessels of concern within our traditional territory. So that includes deploying boom, uh, absorbent pads, uh, monitoring derelict vessels. Right behind us, we have a, a lot of issues with uh, derelict vessels within the territory. So in some of the major harbors, uh, even in front of our provincial park. So we do a lot of ROV surveys. We try and locate the owners and we work closely with Transport Canada and the Canadian Coast Guard to have those vessels removed. 
and contain uh, any of the contaminants that are coming into our marine environment. So lastly, we've got our enforcement staff. Mm -hmm. So we've got two trained uh, staff that are working very closely with CMP DFO to enforce uh, Fisheries Act within our traditional territory. So the, the young men uh, uh, do a lot of in-river patrols for adult salmon. Uh, they monitor and patrol the clam beaches within our territory for commercial, recreational, food, social, and ceremonial for First Nations. So they do a lot of data collection so that we can get a better understanding of the stock levels for for uh, everybody. We, we supply that information to DFO. We keep that information for, for ourselves to better inform our nation and our people on the abundance of our natural resources within, within the territory. So that's kind of a quick general overview of what we do from the Stanimo First Nations Marine Division. So I hope that uh, answers your question uh, in, in a good way. Absolutely. It absolutely does. And I think that uh, many uh, Gabrielans um, will be very surprised to know how sophisticated the work that you're doing with drones and ROV uh, um, and the ROV is the uh, remote operated um, uh, Vessel. vessels yeah. uh, that go under and do the filming and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty sophisticated technology and that's it's very impressive to hear. I know a lot of our community members are very concerned um, about the environment and about the marine environment in particular. And so there are some concerns that have come up that um, I'm wondering if these are things that we should reach out to Cinema and to the Marine Division for. Uh, the first one is we often have reports of abandoned vessels or vessels that have sunk. And so uh, particularly we're here today just off Degnan Bay, uh, where we do have um, occasionally uh, boats being reported as um, having sunk, being abandoned, derelict. So that's one thing. Um, the, other, the other thing that we could talk a little bit about too is uh, shellfish and shellfish harvesting. Uh, many, many residents have uh, observed uh, individuals collecting shellfish and harvesting, um, but don't know what the rules are, uh, or they want to do it themselves and they don't know what the rules are. And so those two issues often come up. So the derelict vessels and the abandoned vessels or the vessels needing assistance, as well as the shellfish harvesting. So awesome. are those things that we go to you for? Absolutely. So we've been working very diligently and we've been working uh, in cooperation with Coast Guard and Transport Canada. So as you know, derelict vessels is a coastal wide problem. We've been dealing with derelict mm -hmm. vessels over the last two years. Uh, so, Stanamo First Nation, in cooperation with uh, Lisa Marie Barron, has uh, developed our uh, has been looking at changing le legislation around derelict vessels for the BC coast, uh, BC coast, uh, and pretty much the coastline of Canada. So that actually is been, being revisited in Parliament right now. So the key thing is let's let's work in some new rules. So we can't have people just abandoning their vessels. Let's start monitoring these vessels. Let's start enhancing the registrations so we can better find out who the owners are of these derelict vessels. And let's start controlling our, our marine environment and holding people accountable and responsible. So our emergency response team is on the water probably four times a week. Oh, and wow. part of their routine patrols is to patrol these harbors for derelict vessels. So if they find a vessel of concern or a vessel that was sunk, which they did, they will automatically report it uh, to vessel of concern. Uh, if it needs to be boomed out and absorbent pads put down, we'll do that. And we will uh, work very diligently to have that vessel removed. Like uh, writing letters, I'll phone, we'll report, we'll document it, we'll get file numbers, we'll locate the owners. We've got some really sophistic sophisticated equipment. So not only for abandoned vessels but uh, that have sunk, but we're also doing a lot of work on vessels that are ready to sink, that mm. are listing, yeah. that are in, in, in trouble. 
that can potentially become a vessel of concern. So we've got five uh, barnacle systems that we can deploy to these vessels. So these are uh, systems that we put on the boat and it'll monitor if it's taken on water, it'll monitor if it's listing, it'll monitor if it goes down and it'll send a direct signal back to our office letting us know that we got to go back out and respond to these vessels. As well, we've got all the pumps that we need to pump out these vessels, monitor them, and just just make sure that they, they don't go down. Uh, so that's a key part of our emergency response uh, division. Okay. So yeah, the other issue is shellfish. Mm -hmm. So Stanamo First Nation, uh, uh, over the last couple of years, we've worked very hard to develop. Uh, we're developing a terms of refer reference with CMP, uh, local CMP from DFO, Conservation, so, conservation and Protection. Conservation okay. Yeah. So we're, we've, uh, within that terms of reference, we've uh, identified a need to bring a, a CMP officer into our office, which is relatively new. I think it's only been done uh, several times in Canada. So we have a CMP officer that works in our office one day a week with our Armot trainees. So what, yeah, what that not? What is our uh, resource management officer okay. trainees? So Perfect. our trainees. So what that means is that we've got access to information, like the information we've got access to training. Mm -hmm. And that means that any fisheries act violation, we can bring it forward to our CMP, like so we can better monitor these these shellfish. So what happens is that there during the winter months there's commercial clam openings uh, within the Sanaimo traditional territory. So uh, you as Gabrielians are going to see a lot of activity on the beaches because DFO issues commercial licenses to people to come out and harvest. Uh, and around Gabriola, the Gabriola Bar and Brookyard are highly productive areas for, for clam and bivalve species. So you're gonna see a high number of people focusing on those areas where there's a high volume of product. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of the commercial openings directed mm -hmm. to these areas, which is concerning for us because this is our traditional foods. So we've been working hard with them, uh, management plans with some of the upper management DFO to kind of get a better idea of how we can manage these resources. Like we, we push that we need to control what's coming out of here. And we've been working uh, with our CMP to monitor any Fisheries Act violations that may be happening within these areas and checking on licensing and people. So so we are monitoring the area quite intensively and we have ju uh, patrols day and night by our armots and we're reporting Fishery Act violations. We're reporting uh, the number of product when we can that's coming off the beaches to better manage these resources. Hey. So. So, um, so what I'm kind of hearing is that maybe uh, it would be good for Gabrielians to reach out to Sinemuk, uh First Nation uh, to report something, but also at this time to also report to DFO when they have concerns, uh, when they feel that somebody is over harvesting or improperly harvesting or may not have a license. Um, so perhaps um, uh, what we can do is um, I think at the end of the video, uh, we can get your uh, phone number and the website uh, for folks to uh, get more information and they can uh, do a little bit more uh, reaching out uh, in the right way yeah. uh, to the nation. Um, because again, I, I do see on our uh, Facebook pages where everybody likes to complain and oh, yeah. we, you know, we do other yeah. things too, but um, uh, folks always say contact the name of First Nation. And so yeah. we now have a face, we'll have a phone number, maybe an email, uh, the website, and um, yeah, it's good. It's good for the community to know that uh, their concerns are the same concerns as Sanema for sure. Absolutely. So, absolutely, reach out. We're we're here to work together with with everyone, and we want to know, like, who better to have their eyes and ears to the ground and know what's going on than than local residents, right? So, yeah, we 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 have about. 
I think 15 staff members in our office, so we have the capacity to actually come out and work with people. We work very closely with the Port of Nanaimo as well. So we share a lot of information on what happens within our traditional territory. So we get dual coverage. So we ask the same of the port. We ask the same of the, we're going to be asking the same of the Port of Vancouver. We ask the same for DFO is keep us informed. This is our lands, this is our resources. So any information we can get to respond to stuff, we'd appreciate. So. John, that has been an extremely informative conversation with that I've had with you. And I really like the idea that Gabrielans now have a contact and a place to go when they do have marine concerns. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to make some good relations and that um, our organizations, our nonprofits and our uh, citizens here can reach out in a good way. Absolutely. And thank you very much for the interview. It's been my pleasure to, uh, to spend some time and get to learn a little bit more about the Gabriella Concerns. Great. And it's my honor to have been here today. So thank you. And thank you. that has uh, been life uh, on Gabriella Media Society here today at the World Ocean Day uh, with uh, John White, uh, Director of the Marine, uh, Marine Resources Division, Sinemuk First Nation. And um, one of uh, First Nation is one of the co-sponsors of our day's event, along with Department of Fisheries and Oceans, uh, the Gabriel Arts Council, and many, many other volunteers. So, I it's good. I it's good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay.